What's up, everybody? Good late afternoon or early evening. First of all, there's going to be a Hawk's Nest stream tonight. It's going to be on my channel and his channel, so watch on one of them or watch on both if you want to, I guess. And uh, we're going to talk about this upcoming Lions game. As daunting of a task as it looks like right now, we're going to try to figure out a way that the Seahawks can get this uh, underdog win on Sunday. But uh, first, before we get there, we got to talk about who are we going to have. And unfortunately, we may not be having a full slate of players. We already know about some of it, but let's go over the injury report that came out just a little bit ago. Condota has the tweet, and it's not that much better than what we saw yesterday, unfortunately. So today, Thursday, the 14th, did not participate in practice. We have Charles Cross and the way that Pete has already spoken about Cross, I'd be shocked if he plays. So mentally, I'm already kind of crossing Cross off, no pun intended, but um, probably not playing. Mike Morris also did not participate in practice, which is, to me, a sign that he won't be playing. Usually by now, you would have seen at least a little bit of practice from him, but two straight DNPs for a rookie when the shoulder injury is something that existed in the uh, preseason when that's something that apparently he's been dealing with since even maybe before we drafted him. Not good. Also not participating in practice was Devin Bush. And remember, Devin Bush practiced in a limited form yesterday. So that means things got worse or they discovered something typically. He goes from an LP yesterday to DNP today. Bad sign. The good news is Jordan Brooks played well enough in that first game to where if we got a roll with Brooks and Wagner, it's certainly not the end of the world. But Jordan Brooks was also on the DNP list. Now, I'm not so worried about Brooks. They even specify in the injury report that it's more of a resting player issue than anything else. There is technically a knee associated with it, but realistically, I think Brooks is going to be fine. Um... You can't really say they got plans to put him on a snap account, any kind of uh, any kind of some sort of like limit on his snaps because they played him so much in that Rams game. Clearly, they feel pretty good about where he is at. So, Jordan Brooks didn't practice. I'm not too worried about him, but the rest of this is not great. Limited participation. We got Jamal Adams still limited in practice. Uh, given the fact that Pete's already kind of indicated that Adams won't play this weekend, I'm pretty much not expecting it. He tends to be overly optimistic, if anything, so when he says a player probably won't play, I tend to take it as he definitely won't play. So, probably going to have to wait on Adams one more week. We also have Boye Mafe, which is actually a step in the right direction, because Mafe was a non-participant in yesterday's practice. So, the fact that he's now practicing today indicates that he's on the right track and will likely play. So that's good. We, we're going to need all hands on deck if we want any opportunity to win this game, I believe. And guys like Boye Mafia are going to have to be leading the charge. We had one full participant, Witherspoon, still listed because the hamstring injury is not completely gone away yet, but it's gone away enough to where he looks like he's going to play. If you have a player and he participates fully in practice during the week, it would be very surprising for that player to not play. If he can't play, then why was he practicing fully? So, looks like we're going to get a first look at Witherspoon this weekend against the Detroit Lions. So, there's a little bit of good news, I guess. But, I don't know if it offsets all this other stuff. Now, talking a little bit about the Charles Cross situation, because that's obviously the big one. That's the one that makes me feel like this game is an uphill battle. Greg Bell and other people have uh, been talking about this. Jason Peters has come in, participated in a few practices with this team at 41 years old, and there is a chance he might start at left tackle. Multiple people have said this. Now, couple of angles to look at this from. On the one hand, that's pretty awesome by Jason Peters. If he's able to get NFL ready in just five days or whatever it would be, that's pretty incredible. At 41 years old, wow. Especially because last year when he was 40, it took him a few weeks to be able to play at all. On the other hand, you have the fact that this is clearly coming from a little bit of a place of desperation. 
So is he going to get out there and be able to play effectively? Is he going to go out there and embarrass himself? Because that's not any better than what we had with uh, with, with Stone Forsythe. That wouldn't be any better than what we have with Raekwon O'Neal. That wouldn't be anything better than what we have with anybody else. So if we throw him out there and he just looks completely unprepared to play NFL football, then what what's the value there, right? The value is only assuming that he plays at at least a replacement level. And the other hand, and yes, I'm pulling a third hand into this. I know you only got two hands, but if you had three, you'd look at that other hand and say, not that I'm the first person to say this. I mean, the very first tweet that replies to Greg Bell's tweet is about this. That is a very damning indictment on Stone Forsyth. If they think this little of him... If they think this poorly of Stone Forsyth, then why even have him on the team? Why would you even have him on the team at that point? I don't know. I can't really make too much sense of it, but there are a few different angles here. Is this going to be the ultimate senior citizen recovery story where he gets out there and actually plays decently despite being on the couch literally six days prior or is this going to be some kind of situation where he goes out there and looks terrible and awful because we were so desperate to do something that isn't Stone Forsyth, we just threw some 41-year-old out there and it goes just as badly? Because we need this left tackle thing to produce something. Like, we can lose one of our tackles, Cross or Lucas, and you can probably shift the game plan a little bit to where you can cover for the other guy. You can get running backs out there to chip. You can get tight ends out there to help. You can double team. There are things you can do to mitigate losing one of your tackles and playing a backup at one spot. But losing both and having both guys be turnstiles, you're kind of DOA. So we'll see what goes on with this Jason Peters thing, but I'm very interested to see how he plays on Sunday if he does play. Uh, finally, we got the Lions injury report. Theirs is very simple. No change from yesterday. Frank Ragnow, full participant in practice. He's going to go, almost certainly. Taylor Decker, no practice. Khalil Dorsey, no practice. Emmanuel Mosley, no practice. Uh, I think Decker and Mosley are probably not playing if they're missing this much practice. Dorsey, I don't know. He's got an illness, right? And an illness is something that is going to kind of clear up pretty quickly when it clears up. It's not like a traditional injury. So Dorsey might play, but Decker's the big one. And Mosley's significant too, actually, but Decker's the big one. So it seems like he's not going to be able to play. Hopefully that's something that we can utilize to get some kind of pass rush going. So I'm going to take the advantages where I can get them and see if we can make anything of it. But uh, yeah, that's your Seahawks injury report. It's not really getting any better. There is some silver linings you can find and there is some interesting subplots, but on the whole... This is the exact opposite of the way we needed this season to start. See you guys on the Hawks Nest stream later, and um, good thing we have that uh, week five bye after all, huh?